that place? They're like, guys, it's a 34. <laughs> True Australian experience. First kangaroo sighting since we've been in Australia in an R34. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. VR38, 4.1 liter, four wheel drive, sequential gearbox, S chassis. <laughs> Let's let that soak in for a second. Hold on. What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. Welcome back to another feature on our Sydney, Australia tour. We got a couple R34 GTRs. They make somewhere around a thousand-ish wheel horsepower, but the reason we came and the special treat, we have a Pulsar GTIR. It makes north of a thousand wheel horsepower, all wheel horsepower on boost. And I heard it has another 200 shot of nitrous on top of that. All right guys, let's get into it. Gio, what's up, brother? How's things? Thank you so much for having us out. Not a problem. So we're, we're here in Sydney, Australia, all the way from the US, and you opened your doors to us at the shop. I can't thank you enough. We got a, looks like a Bayside Blue R34 here. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the basic rundown? And I think, are, are we gonna go for a spin in this one, or? Yeah, I wanna get, get some fuel first. It's a 2.8 liter sequential gearbox, V-cam, precision turbo, Motec ECU. About how much horsepower does it this make? This makes 1,100. 1,100? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a peek at the engine real quick here. What size turbo is that? It's a 76, 85. What do you, what do you guys rep this thing to? Uh, this goes to 10,000. And then this is what, on 85 or? Yeah, 85. So it's flex fuel, so 85, 98. Not sure what you guys call pump fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, same, same thing. Yeah. All right, man, well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go for a spin. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All sounds nice. It's not. It's not too loud. Very, very street car. It's got a little uh, aggressive, aggressive dip, yeah, dip in it. Yeah. yeah. What, what dip is in it? It's a. It's a Nismo. I can't remember exactly which one we're putting in it. So it's, it's many years ago, but we're a little bit more of an aggressive dip, dip and stuff. Yeah. We actually, we actually pulled the um the active LSD out of it. Okay. Which I sort of wish we didn't, but at the time we did. Like we built this car about ten years ago now. No eight, way. eight years ago. Really? Yeah. Kangaroos. What's up, buddies? <laughs> Look at that, dude. They're like, guys, it's a 34. <laughs> oh, it's so cool, man. So, true Australian experience. First kangaroo sighting since we've been in Australia in an R34. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. So we got a uh, little Motec keypad here. You got uh, different boost settings in there? Yeah, we got boost, uh, traction, fan override, launch, center diff control. Nice. Yeah. Uh, That's V cam as well. Oh, that's why. <laughs> and you said this is a 7685. Yeah. Dang. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think it'd be that responsive. It gets moving. And and this this same setup uh, has been running for quite a while. Like, yeah. it doesn't hurt like hurt the blocks at this level or anything. At 1200, we'll hurt, we'll hurt in the blocks. Right. But 1000 is like pretty reliable. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a um, good number. Yeah, sweet spot. Yeah. 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 The car went um, on the street tires as it is now. It went nine five one fifty six, I think it was one fifty eight. But as it is now, right. these these road tires. Wow, guys, that is that is just perfect. The two eight with V cam is is honestly a really different experience than like the RV thirty stuff. Yeah, it's hard to explain. It just feels real different. Sounds a little different for sure. Yeah, the thing was getting rowdy. <laughs> the thing was getting rowdy. That's a good time. Thank you so much, brother. Said 
it makes north of like a thousand wheel horsepower on 40 or 50 pounds of boost. And then it also has like another, I think it said 150 or 200 shot of nitrous on top of that. So probably like 12-ish 100 wheel horsepower, weighs about 2,400 pounds, and it's an air shifted sequential paddle shifter. It's gonna get real, boys. So we have here the Street King, which is the Nissan GTIR 1993 model with an SR20 all-wheel drive, Hollinger gearbox, well over a thousand horsepower, a very, very serious car out of the power tune stables. <laughs> engine bay first of all we have a billet block billet sr camshaft and engine package all built here in house we have a 72 millimeter precision turbocharger twin waste twin turbo smart wastegates one thing that you will notice is the hollinger gearbox looks a little bit strange you'll probably not find it available online anywhere and that's because it's actually an evo gearbox so this is one of the really cool things with the with our kits that we have here we've developed an adapter kit that allows you to adapt an evo gearbox to an sr20 motor which allows us to basically have a stronger gearbox for the GDIR platform. So this car is probably not something that you guys see a lot of in America. Definitely not, man. But yeah, this is this is pretty much, you know, one of our, I guess, our premier builds um, here from Powerchin. Yeah, oh no, this is this is, uh, this is wild. So so you guys mainly, uh, the gearbox is really interesting. You guys mainly change yep. that out because um, from what I'm familiar with these, the gearboxes aren't very strong. And I guess even if, if you build it, I guess, is that why you also change it to the Evo box or? That's right. So the factory gearbox in these cars is typically very, very weak. And even when you put a dog engagement gear set in them, the case actually is not strong enough to sort of contain that sort of power. So that's why we actually have developed an adapter kit and used an Evo gearbox, which is obviously much, much, much stronger from factory. And then up from that, we've gone to a Hollinger sequential as well. So Man, that's, wild. that's why we've gone down this <laughs> so path. Uh, and it's paddle shifted sequential. And Paddle shifted as well. <laughs> <laughs> paddle shifted sequential, 1000 horsepower on boost. And then I think right. 200 of gas or nitrous? Yeah, about 150, 200 of nitrous. So, you know, all <laughs> in, we're looking at somewhere around about 1200 horsepower. Um, which and it weighs? Huge. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is in pounds, but I can tell you that it's got a power to weight ratio of about one to one. These are typically built, you know, they, they might make, you know, 250 kilowatts, 300 kilowatts, and, and that's pretty much the limit of them. We don't see a great deal of them sort of in Australia on the streets and stuff. I mean, they are around, but certainly not like the GTRs and other cars. We're lucky enough here at Powertune to have two very high powered ones, both with Hollinger sequentials in them. This one being the, the most powerful one. Um, so there's another one of these floating around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have all the fun. So on the interior, um, it's pretty much all business. So we've got carbon fiber dash, Motec C1212 display, keypad for the control. You mind if I sit in it? Yeah, go for it, go for it. So quick POV here to what you see when it's probably absolute light speed madness here. <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> when much. you get on the gas with this thing, but basically got paddle shifters here. Awesome Motec dash. You got your can keypad there. Man, this is sweet. And you got your uh, grocery getter, you just throw the groceries back there. Exactly right. So I can show you in the boot if you like. Yeah. I mean, the, the boot space is pretty good for groceries. <laughs> so in the back, obviously parachute mount and things like that that aren't on it. Again, all business in the boot. Nitrous, a lithium battery mounted in here as well. Effectively, this car is all about going fast. All so business. there's. There's no, you know, fancy creature comforts like heated seats and all that sort of thing, but yeah. it's it's built to go fast. Uh, do you guys typically like do digs or roll racing with this or? So this car at the moment is kind of set up for roll racing. That's kind of, I guess, the premier event at the moment in Sydney. Um, that being said, it's absolutely the sort of car that we will be taking to the drag strip. At the moment though, roll racing is the focus. Has it been down the drag strip or anything or? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been down the drag strip a number of times. <laughs> to a point where we were we had sort of the cast block at its absolute limits and we decided to basically go all in uh, what's the best time that it's had uh, and that, that's i guess that's an unprep surface right yeah so that's an unprep surface so we don't really have a, an official you know drag strip time but i mean i would expect for this car in its current sort of you know, outfit it should be a sort of mid to high eight second car fairly comfortably 
So taking on from that Godzilla heritage, you know, I guess Godzilla's little brother, we've used in this particular car, we use a GTR differential and GTR drive shafts as well, purely because the power that we're making just isn't able to be held by the standard GTIR setup. You mind firing this thing up? Yeah, absolutely, let's do it. This one is, uh, what's the basic rundown on this one? Uh, 2.9 litre, V cam, sequential, uh, EFR, 9180 turbo. This is a 2.9, what, what stroker kit is that? That's a Brian Crow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a 79 mil stroke. We know, we know uh, Brian Crow well in the States. <laughs> <laughs> so this has got, yeah, this has got 35 brakes on it as well. So the diff in this one doesn't feel as aggressive. Yeah. So this has got the uh, active LSD still in it. <laughs> oh, the sounds, dude. for the boost to come in, but then it also got rowdy, you know? <laughs> Different power band on this one. Yeah, give it another one here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Just like the spirit of driving, you know, just going through the gears like that. You get all the sounds, this thing accelerates like an animal, bro. But smiles here, boys. This is a, a wild ride, brother. That's <laughs> good, isn't it? It definitely works. Nice and smooth. It no, just works. Nothing but smiles for yeah, the rest good. of the day for me. <laughs> you didn't even two step it though, did you, Chia? We, oh, did you two step we, it? We did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good. I love this thing is wild. <laughs> good. It is wild, bro. Excellent. 
Thank you, man. Nah, no, Appreciate it. So basically we're a workshop based in Eastern Creek here um, in Sydney, New South Wales. We specialize in pretty much every Japanese car um, and also a whole bunch of modern cars as well. I'll take you for a bit of a tour through the workshop, I'll show you what we've got in the shop and I'll sort of give you a bit of a rundown on some of the other cool things that we do around the place. Let's do it brother. Let's do it. I, I see these two beautiful R34s behind us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so of course everybody you know wants to see the GTRs, of course. So we have two really, really nice examples behind me. Um, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on them. These cars are both, you know, thousand, thousand horsepower GTRs, like yeah. everything else in Australia is. But these two are set up to be true street cars. So we've got the owners um, basically drive these cars all the time. Yeah, well, I heard, I heard this, this one here yep. had uh, quite the drive to get here, maybe two or three hours to get here. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So he came up from Canberra, which, you know, like it's, it's a bit of a drive. So literally drove it up here, no trailers, nothing like that. So like I said, these are true genuine street cars that the whole build of these cars was designed to be drivable. No like huge power, like let's be honest, yeah, they're okay, these cars can make, you know, massive power, but the whole idea is basically these cars are drivable in everywhere in the rev range. So mid-range torque, low down drivability, everything that you need for a daily drive effectively. Awesome, man. Well, let's uh let's pop the hoods, let's check out under the bonnet and Absolutely. Uh, we can get the rundown. So as you can see, this is super, super clean car, super, super clean. And I, I see this one has like the Z-Tune uh, fenders and front end and all that. I mean, there's the That's aggressive right. look. Oh man, I love it. So one of the cool facts about this car is that the Z-Tune front end that you can see on it is all genuine. So it's not replicated. This is a genuine Z-Tune front end on this car. Yeah, so I guess for those that are watching and might not know, so it's, you can see a little different. We actually have a good example over there that's not a Z-Tune, but yep. they kind of come out here and it just gives it this really wide, aggressive, aggressive. looking in the front bumper. You can see here, look at that, perfect example back to back. What do we got here? All right, so this is a bit of a Powertune specialty. Um, for those that, have, that know about Powertune, you may know about the 2.8 liter builds that we've been doing for a number of years now. Some of the guys have been talking recently about the Elephant package, 2.8 liter, 1000 horsepower setup. This is pretty much one of those setups. So it runs a Tome 2.8 liter, um, bottom end. We run a HKS V cam. So again, that's that's coming back to that drivability point where we can actually move the camshaft and bring the car on earlier, get that extra drivability. We've got a 9174 EFR um, on this particular car. Drive by wire, we've got a mechanical fuel pump set up, 12 injectors on it, and a sequential gearbox. Whilst there's a couple of things in there you might go, oh wow, that's like, you know, that's massive, that's big power stuff or yeah. whatever it may be. We've actually refined it, this particular package, to be like a, a true thousand horsepower street car that you can just jump in and drive. A lot of the, the Aussie builds, you know, quote unquote Aussie builds that we see, yep. aren't doing like Tomei stuff. So that's kind of like holding true to like, you know, the, the JDM the, roots. The JDM roots. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. It's, it's, uh, but, but you have a little bit of the spicy stuff with like the sequential in there and, absolutely. you know, mechanical mechanical fuel pump is not something you see often there. So <laughs> it's it's a really, uh, really cool, uh, interesting setup, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So like, like you mentioned, the mechanical fuel pump now that's a preference of ours here at powertune so when once you start to make a thousand horsepower you need you know two or three pumps and it's quite a load on the alternator and if you have one pump fail it's not necessarily going to be a good time for you so basically we've moved them all to this mechanical fuel pump setup so this mechanical fuel pump setup is something that we built in house and i'm going to take you next door in, in a little bit and i'll show you where that all gets made um, so with this is this gets made in house uh, we modify the shroud to go around it um, and basically that allows us to run a small injector as well. And we can run a higher fuel pressure, which means that basically we can have that low down drivability of say an 800cc injector or smaller, but still have enough fuel up top with the second set of injectors to, to make a thousand horsepower and not be under fueled. Like I said, it makes about a thousand horsepower, but it makes it very early. It makes positive pressure at around two and a half thousand RPM. You know, it's, it's actually starts to make boost there. It doesn't make huge amounts, but the drivability of this car is next level. And I'm sure you're going to get to experience that yourself. But that's, this, this is, I guess, the, the specialty of us, of, of our GTRs here. We don't do a lot of, you know, huge power ones, but this is what we, we really focus on. So the second one, um, again, 34 GTR. Um, this one's a little bit more serious. This color looks so good. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's special. Every, everyone it's loves it. It's the hero color, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's the hero color. It. 
Oh, that's a big boy right there. So yeah, this is a little this bit bigger. The, the big power stuff, huh? Yeah. So again, same type of setup, 2.8 liter HKS VCAM, drive-by-wire mechanical fuel pump setup. This one's actually got a 76, 75 precision on it. It makes more power than than the one next to us sure, here. Sure, sure. That's a spicy turbo. Bit, bit more spicy. Yeah, that's right. Now, obviously with a GTR, we can, you know, you can go crazy with the turbo sizes on these things. But again, this is literally driven to work and home by the owner. <laughs> like in his 40s, drives this thing to work, enjoys the heck out of it. And that's what we love sort of building here. At I Belgium. love it. That is awesome. Like for the most part, you got some Recaros in here. And then you said this was a uh, OS Gaiken, uh That's right, sequential? yeah. So it's an OS88 sequential gearbox. Both of the cars run those gearboxes. This one's just got some Recaros in it, slightly different slightly different seats. The steering wheel as well, um, and a Nismo dash. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. It does have the Motec C127 in the factory MFD location. So that's kind of, I guess, a neat little feature. Overall, the interior is kept very clean stock. Oh, yeah. It's that's kind of what we're going for there. We don't want to we don't want to wreck, you know, the the underlying of the car. The other thing that you'll find too is that a lot of our engine bays, there's no cutting, so we avoid cutting any of that factory car. Yeah. You know, we we don't like the idea of cutting up a really nice car and wrecking it by cutting a hole to run an intercooler pipe through it. Mm -hmm. Make the intercooler pipe go around it. Oh yeah. That's I mean these are these aren't forty, fifty thousand dollar cars anymore. Not anymore, no. <laughs> <laughs> Add a couple of zeros. Yep, yep, yep. Oh man, this is uh such a beautiful, beautiful build, man. Both of these cars are incredibly clean. So on top of everything else, we also manufacture our own parts, or we have them done by a company called Fast Talk Performance Engineering, based right next door to us. So that's where we are right now, standing inside here. What we got here? <laughs> what is that? Hey, Ryan, is, is this the RB26 billet cylinder head that no one's supposed to know about, and that I'm not supposed to know about, but I do, and no one else does, or what? Yeah. <laughs> about that <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's been used this is a billet rb26 head that's been on a car it's been on a dyno it's been tested and work is underway to you know complete this this head from our wonderful neighbor and friend fast talk performance engineering and this is pete yeah it's still work in progress right pete yeah we didn't want it um out in the public yet until we've proved it and tested it we've done what what did we say about 20 dyno runs on it um yep. It's been street driven, all sorts of things, all around about a thousand horsepower. It's going to be remade with a few little adjustments to it. When we put it on, we found a whole bunch of things that could be fixed and improved on and all that sort of stuff, so. On, on top of that, what is different about this particular one is that nothing was scanned. There was no 3D scanning involved whatsoever. Pete has effectively drawn this from measurements from the ground yeah, up. Yeah, we took a stock cylinder head, put it up on the machine and probed all the points created all the surfaces, all the solids, all the geometry. Set about overcoming all the major obstacles that there are building a freaking cylinder head. I'll tell you what, it's not easy. <laughs> For sure. If it was easy, it would have been done 10 times already, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, many, like, many have talked about it. I many. believe a lot have tried and just given up because uh, obviously it's a huge time consuming project and it costs a lot of dollars. Yeah, I've seen a, a couple, I think 2J ones floating around here and there, but that was many years ago and I haven't heard yeah. about them since. <laughs> Either they're too expensive to produce or yeah. they're, yeah, no, they didn't work, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going with the latter. Yeah. I'm going with it didn't work. <laughs> Because uh, there's guys with enough money that they don't care. So uh, but check it out. There's, you know, exhaust ports have been used. Look Dirty at ports. that. Dirty ports. You Australians always pushing the limit on these <clears throat> RBs, huh? <laughs> Exciting stuff. There's a bunch of other parts that we do as well, like a gear position sensor for an OS88 gearbox, throttle deletes for a factory RB26 manifold, a mechanical fuel pump setup for the RB, and also a paddle shift setup that we do, a pneumatic shifter setup for a GTR that allows us to convert gearboxes such as OS, PPG, anything like that, we can adapt those and make them effectively a paddle shifted gearbox. Um, so all of that's done right here, right next door to us um, with our friends at FTPE. So this is one that you probably haven't seen. <laughs> oh, we don't, we don't get these in America. You don't get them, I'm do super you? jealous because they're cool. They're cool. They're cool cars. This is a GR Yaris. So this is you know, what you've probably seen all around the internet and has the same engine as the GR Corolla, which you guys are going to be getting if you haven't already. This particular one is fitted with an X-Shift sequential transmission. So we've pulled that out so you can have a quick look over that. Here's the magical three-cylinder 1.6 litre engine. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> pulled it out so we can just get a full inspection here. That's exactly right. So <laughs> these, these motors are, are built ridiculously tough. Like 
I'm talking like, you, you know what your Jay-Zs are like, you know, your 2J type setups. This is like a three cylinder 2J. No um, way, you know, really? the rods are huge in it. The, the gudgeon pins are huge in it. Everything's massive and over engineered. Awesome. So we've actually been able to already run up, you know, in, in sort of horsepower terms, around 550 horsepower on a stock motor, no with way. the exception of just putting basically head studs, sure. camshafts and springs, and that's it. And it will make that power quite happily. And so it's the like only, half a 2 -day. yeah, it's, it, well, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's like half a 2J. So yeah, they, these setups are like really, really cool and something that's sort of becoming more popular here because the cars are new, have all the nice creature comforts in them, they're light and you can make tons of power with not a great deal of expenditure. Like we don't have to tear this down and build this thing ground up. It's, right. it's ready to go. I'd be disappointed if it didn't make nearly 450 kilowatts in this particular setup. So that's quite a lot in a car that's fun. that big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that would be amazing. Yeah. So we're, this this one should make some pretty serious power, and it's going to be a, a hell of a fun car to drive, awesome. um, well, especially with the sequential gearbox. Yeah, this is a cool little engine. And so to think that like we're talking 1.6 liter three cylinder, I'm pretty sure you could buy get a shoebox that's longer than this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next one we have a VF Commodore Ute. So this is uh, Australia right here. Yeah, essence this, this the is, essence of Australia. This is Australia. 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 Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so effectively, this would be a V8 supercharged cab. Yeah. In Australia. <laughs> so how much power does this one make? Is that a, so that's a Pro Charger? That's Pro Charger, yep. yep. So that's an F1A 94 mil Pro Charger. We got a seven liter motor, all the, the supporting bits and pieces on this one. And you know, we're expecting somewhere around maybe 12, 1300 horsepower. Say, this thing's gotta make some jam, big it's, cubes, and that's a, that's a big Pro Charger, yeah. you know? Yeah. What, what, um, what, <laughs> we fixed it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. No, so this one, uh, it's a bit of a shop project. It's been going on for a little bit. Um, basically, we've put a K motor into the RX-8. It's a dedicated track car. It's, it's not a street car or anything like that. It's, it's something that we've just sort of been plodding along in between other bits and pieces. But let's face it, we've got customer cars to work on. So it's been a, been a long drawn out so this one. this is a shop car? Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. So this is, this is just a labor of love in a way of you know, at the moment it's a it's a stock K24 um, with a K20 on head, average size Garrett turbo. It's it's a setup for a track car. It's not yeah. going to make any crazy power. I think we'll be happy realistically if it makes let's say 500 horsepower. I mean, for a track car, that's still it, it's still plenty. It's still plenty, yeah. and and that will be wicked, like or, or you know turned right up, I guess. Yep. Just come through to our engine room. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of billet floating around. It seems to kind of be the thing that's this sort of everybody wants to do these days, but. We build a lot of our engines in-house. We outsource the machining because let's face it, we don't have the space to have all those tools, but all of the assembly and everything else is done here. So we get you know, the tunnel boring and other bits and pieces done externally. We do, like I said, uh, Evo, 4G, RB, pretty much everything that you've seen that we've walked past today, we will build in-house here. There are a couple of exceptions, but primarily these these are what we're sort of tooled up to do. We typically turn out, you know, maybe one to two engines sort of every one to two weeks, depending on what's happening out in the shop. The shop that we've been through, that, that we've, I've sort of just shown you, is I guess our project shop. So this it's typically where cars sit for a little bit longer when they're getting a lot more work done to them. Next door is our higher turnover, and that's where you'll see cars coming in and out for, for smaller jobs, you know, like tunes and maybe injector fitment and fuel pump and then out the door. This is where they'll sit, the engines come out, Engines get built, engines go in, car leaves. Um, that's primarily what this side of the business is for. So this is our shop that's right next door. This is the shop that gets, I guess, the, the in and out and high turnover every day. 32 GTR, um, getting a full engine build and everything else. So that car's literally just been stripped. We've got a 35 GTR, super simple setup, you know, 1700 horsepower, 34 GTR. This one is post purchase inspection. So this one's just been imported from Japan. We're just doing a quick check over service and that sort of thing. And, and then that will be back out on the road. We've got something that's really cool, a four door GTR. So I was, I was peeking at this and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, what is this? So this is a four door R33 GTR which is called the Ortec version. So that, I don't think I've ever seen that, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. So it's something that you don't see ever, really. I mean, there's certainly four door that aren't GTRs, yeah. but this is a this proper- is a Proper GTR, proper not GTR. just badges. Not just badges, that's right. <laughs> I mean, so like, let's look at the front here, right? <laughs> yep, it's a GTR, you know? And then you come over to the side and you're like, we can take all the, all the boys, uh, you know, Cruising. out for a cruise. That's right. Yeah. And the cool things are. Oh, it's so weird, man. It looks, it looks weird. <laughs> so we're talking like sequential gearbox. And a sequential. Four seater. Oh, it's, 
<laughs> if you look there, that is literally a four-seater. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. It's got like bucket seats now. <laughs> hump in the middle, yeah. Literally oh, these look a little different here back too. Yeah, absolutely. There can't be many of those. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen one. No, there's not. They're a very, very, very rare car. Very, very rare. Andrew will probably know the exact number, um, <laughs> but these things are super, super rare. Yeah. yeah. Here we've got S15 corner. Yeah. <laughs> these are all getting all different bits and pieces done. Um, but the one that you'll probably like is hiding down the end. You've been saying that a lot during this, <laughs> like the one we'll probably <laughs> like. Oh, yes, that's, not, that's not supposed to be in there. Do you like it? I'm, I'm happy it's in there. <laughs> Would you look at that? Oh, that's cool. So we got a VR38. VR38, 4.1 liter, four wheel drive. So it's a stroker. It's a stroker. Wait, four wheel, four -wheel, drive. -wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Sequential gearbox, S chassis. What? <laughs> Let's let that soak in for a second. Hold on. My brain kind of <laughs> locked up a second. What's the setup there? Is that like Skyline stuff or what? So there's a few secrets to this build, um, but effectively VR38, or originally a VR38, um, you know, now 4.1, it runs you know, GDR parts in the front of it, sure. um, which allows us to make it four-wheel drive. Okay. Um, runs a Hollinger gearbox. So you're doing like the, like the sump with the diffinite in front and stuff, and like the RB? Yeah, so you can have a look yeah, if you yeah, wanna have a look. Yeah, 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 you can yeah, have yeah, a look. Yeah. yeah, you can have a look. <laughs> My man, let's, let's take a peek here. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got a transfer box back there. It's actually all-wheel drive. It is actually. You weren't shitting us. No. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. So, yeah, that's that, that's something really cool that we've, you know, we've, we've Well, you're going to have to keep so. us posted on this because this is going to be really cool. Like, yeah, absolutely. This is something super unique, especially sequential. I mean, these are really light chassis. So you look at the 33s, 34s, even the 32s, they're all, yep. you know, 33, 34, 3,500 pounds, depending on all the parts you add to them, or cage or no cage. Yep. These things are much lighter. <laughs> Much lighter, yeah. So, and then you got this monster of a platform here that can make all the jam and all the torque and... Correct, yeah. That's cool. That's and really so, cool. some of the other cool things about this build, I guess, one of the, the requirements of the build from the customer was that the bonnet had to close. So that was like a massive deal oh, because yeah. these engines are not exactly the you know, most compact. Sure. Um, and then you're also fitting a bunch of other stuff to make all the drive right. work. So a lot of challenges, I imagine. There are a lot of challenges in it. The car is going to be a genuine street car. It's not built to be a race car. So as you can see at the moment, it's, it's you know, the paint's maybe not, you know, 10 out of 10. Sure. It's pretty much going to be finished here. Then it's going off to paint. It's going to be painted and then, you know, delivered to the customer. This one is our Time Attack Evo. This one has all of the aero. A little bit of downforce. <laughs> I mean, look at, look how crazy this looks. Look how low off the ground. Oh, that's wild. This setup is literally designed for time attack. Maximum aero to meet the class requirements. So width, height, ride height, wing, everything meets the, the letter of the law in terms of rules. But this setup, you know, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a built motor, paddle shifted Hollinger gearbox. So we're talking, you know, like five, 600 kilowatts thereabouts, um, which you know, it's 700-ish horsepower, somewhere around there, which is All the tons for a track car. <laughs> Heaps of downforce. So it's ultimately designed to go round corners. We're gonna have to really plug fast. a couple of clips here. One of the other really cool cars that we've got here uh, is Jake Jones, the Drift Squids RBM3. Look at that. See, normally uh, in the States, everyone does a 2J. I, I absolutely approve of this. <laughs> this is awesome. So this thing screams to 10 and a half thousand RPM. It's pretty much Jake's hero car, which you know, you can see you know, lots of videos and stuff online about it, but this car literally gets belted and beat on every time it's driven. <laughs> and that motor is still the same one since like it, it was done. So wow. that's a testament to the, you know, the, that recipe that we have for oh, this, yeah. this particular setup. It's not all about making 1600 horsepower when it's a, you know, sure. a drift car, but you know, this car gets beat on every time it's driven and oh, yeah. I mean it's it's a well, seriously especially cool like car. you know you, uh, a lot of people back in the states the uh, common thing is reliability and RB don't go hand in hand and yep. drifting or doing anything of that sort where you're just almost on the limiter constantly right so for this thing to stay together I'm gonna I mean I've been seeing it a lot but dry sump 
<laughs> I've noticed a very common thing yeah. for these things to stay alive. So that, I mean, that's that's cool. I mean, I think you showed me a clip earlier. If this was the car, I'm not sure, but yep. uh, of, of it just thrashing. Absolutely. So to put an RB through that, I mean, that's a testament. Right? It's abuse. Let's face it. It's abuse. Yeah. It's, it's doesn't matter what power. Yeah, that's right. On the limiter or very close to for pretty much all of its life. I mean, it doesn't get driven on the road or anywhere other than drifting. And as you know, a drifting event is flat out all the time. So oh, yeah. that's that's, cool. this, that's this setup, yeah. Oh, this thing is just full send. Yeah, 100% <laughs> send. Love it, man. Dude, this is great. This is great. You guys do it yeah. all. We've got, that's what I mean. Like when I say variety, I really mean variety. Like it's not just Japanese, you know, JDM stuff where it's like, you know, oh, it's 15 GTR. We, yeah, we take on everything. going fast, right? That's exactly <laughs> right. Whether it be drift, drag, you know, circuit Side car, rally car, <laughs> hell, Drift I'll out. tune your boat. We'll yeah. do your jet ski. We'll do, we'll do whatever you like. <laughs> That's awesome, brother. Well, yeah. thank you so much for showing me around. It's not on our tour. And probably one of the more intricate uh, parts of our job is our wiring room. Now, this is a room that we've built specially for wiring. And we specialize in everything from the small jobs where we're just wiring in sensors to full car tail light to headlight wiring harnesses. One of the really neat features um, or things that we've been working on lately are our adapter boxes for ECUs. So this is a GTR adapter box, as you can see. We have basically a, a PCB inside. This plugs into your factory wiring and allows us to put any aftermarket ECU into one of those cars. So you can plug in a MoTeC, an Mtron, a Haltech, a Link, whatever you like, it just makes it fully plug and play. So that saves you know everybody doing wiring and stuff. You don't have to do it, we've done it for you with one of these. That's that's one thing that we're really trying to de deliver for a lot of cars. Another thing that we do is we actually do adapter harnesses. So this is these are some that are in the build at the moment. They basically go from the factory connector. This would normally be inside of an ECU. Connect your factory wiring to that and this will go to an aftermarket ECU. So again, you don't have to cut any of that original wiring or anything like that that's, that's inside your car. So that's something that we're trying to do a lot more of and we've invested quite heavily. So that's what with this room that you see around us at the moment, this is where all of this happens. So we've invested in some machinery as well um, to make crimping and, and other bits and pieces just that little bit more efficient, I guess you could say. Sure. Um, so the machine in front of us, for example, let's just do a really quick sample. So this particular machine, if I turn it on, basically um, takes a, an uncut piece of wire. So you can see here, it's just a unterminated piece of wire. I can take that, insert it into this machine like this. <laughs> and we have a perfectly crimped super seal connector. Oh, I love it. So when you have to do about a thousand of those. <laughs> that's right. It makes your life, makes your life a whole lot easier. So. <laughs> That's, that's one of the machines that we've invested in. Um, and we've, we're spending a lot of money in this space purely because this is where we can get a lot more development completed and get ECUs into cars. That's something that we really, really try and do. One of the other really neat things that we have is our CAM Gateway product. Uh, the CAM Gateway product allows us for newer cars, newer than 2008. So let's say you've got a new Yaris or GR Corolla. We've got a gateway product that basically interfaces those aftermarket ECUs like Link, Haltech, Mtron, Motec, whatever it may be. And we're able to put those into those newer cars and keep all the CAN communications working inside them as well. So that's another neat product that we've been working on. So that's just a couple of the small little things that we do here at PowerTune. Thank you so much, brother. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you guys do some really, really great work here. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.